when I've got something I'm worried about, I always go and talk to Gary. Because I'm used to Gary's my best friend. Which wooden spoons, guys? What? Wooden spoons. Um, in that. In that one. They were in that one. We're totally different. Gary would rather go home and have a quiet night in, and where I'd rather be dashing about the Trafford Centre or Tesco's. And Big one. That's a best today, an wooden spoon. Where? <laughs> Are you very unfamiliar with your kitchen, Gary? No, not really. There'd be no one kitchen in the world without a wooden spoon. Do you know, Gary only re- hates the rooms that he's, he lives in. <laughs> he's reading too many magazines. We used to share rooms when we used to go away with the teams. It got to the point where Gary was going to bed at nine o'clock, half nine. And I was watching the telly, still awake, on the phone to Victoria at half eleven, twelve. And then he'd be up at seven o'clock in the morning, and I'd want to lie until ten, eleven. So it didn't really work out, so you he like chucked the old me couple. out. Yeah, like the old married oh, couple. Tremendous pasta, isn't it? Mm. That's That's Thanks for eating all the while. No, you don't have to eat all. Okay, I'll go and join. Uh, that's it, yeah, I won't eat, I won't eat them. Don't eat all because then you won't be out of the If David cooks for you here, that, you, you think that might be perceived as a, as a an effeminate thing to do, but if, yeah. you had, if you owned a string of restaurants, that wouldn't be an effeminate thing to do. Yeah, but it'd be okay if David was cooking for them. Bex, that's burning. Bex says that's burning. That's burning. Put that pan there. It's got potatoes in it. What's that on burning? Huh? It just says it just flamed off. What's burning? That underneath seat, that bar. What is it, that? Flame. It's possible like that. It's okay cooking for me, but not getting filmed cooking for me. So nobody knows about it, you know what I mean? You're joking. Yeah, it's just can't get out of it. Do you think it's feminine if you're not cooking for me? I'm kind of curious now about my awareness of Richard Hamilton. I mean, it is work that I know from the late, say, early 70s. I was aware of pop. I mean, pop was the, you know, as a teenager growing up in, in Manchester, it was an aesthetic which I, you know, which I could understand. And so I would look at pop books. I read enough to kind of understand Richard Hamilton's place as perhaps the you know the, the godfather of of pop and, and i remember particularly in, in in a book seeing hamilton's definition of, of pop and the, the the 10 or 11 kind of criteria sexy mass-produced disposable big business glamorous that made a a very big impression upon me this particular work by hamilton this is the toaster it's, it's a screen print lighter print it has a a, a foil um Applied, I knew it first, probably round about 75. I saw it in a book, Manchester Polytechnic Graphics Department in the library, and um, it's in a pop art book. It might have even been a Hamilton book, I don't know. I, I became aware what influence it had been on me. A long time later, like 25 years later, I saw it that day and, and realised how much it had influenced my own work. What distinguished this for me from from other pop art works was that um, I didn't I didn't see any irony in it. You know, I was I was aware enough to realise, you know, when I was twenty, that a lot of the American pop art had had this degree of irony, um, and I didn't sense that in this piece. Um, I sensed it more as a as, a, as a, an acknowledgement, an acknowledgement through fine art of the applied arts. And I, I sensed that Hamilton was, in a way, acknowledging that the design quality of, of Dieter Rams' original, 
um, the, the, the toaster itself and in a way celebrating that as an everyday object that, that was kind of fulfilling the, the principles, the, the idealism of, uh, of modernism in, in, in a real everyday functional item. And, and then it was the presentation of that in the kind of context of a, of a catalogue with a, with a text that was very much the text you'd find in a, in a product catalogue. And, and I believe this is actually, the text is very much a kind of a um, little bit of artistic working with, with the original product text. And so it was product design and it was obviously photography and it was typography and it was in a way the kind of graphic the graphic work, this use of foil here, I mean this day when I saw it in 2000, I was, I was shocked, I was shocked for myself, I mean it's so much like the use of materials that, 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 that I attempted at, at Factory Records. One day, a young boy said to me, why don't you photograph graffiti? And he opened his notebook, and he had these drawings in his notebook, and he showed me that he put the drawing on the wall. And I'm like, you mean you designed the pieces? You designed this before you put it? I mean, for me, I thought it was pure vandalism. And the minute that I understood that there was a systematic designing and painting on the wall, I became fascinated by it. I guess the credit as well is often 